Hello all. Welcome to the episode 3 of the neck muscle anatomy session. My name is Parish Naik and I am an ENT consultant. I know by now you would have been slightly bored about this neck muscles. They are very small and almost all have the same function. But you know, as they say during surgery, do not touch what you do not know. So it's better to know what it is. So let's start with the infrahyoid muscles. The infrahyoid muscles are four muscles located inferior to the hyoid as clearly obvious by the name. It connects sternum and scapula and also it helps in movement of the larynx. These are four muscles, the sternohyoid, omohyoid, sternothyroid and thyrohyoid. It's like having names of quadruplets, sternohyoid, omohyoid, sternothyroid and thyrohyoid. Generally speaking, the main function of all the muscles is positioning the hyoid bone and movement of the thyroid cartilage for laryngeal movement. It also helps during vocalization, swallowing and mastication. So, moving to the second strap muscle, the sternothyroid. Again, the lilac, lavender one, lilac. Let's, let's stick with lilac. This sternothyroid, it's a paired muscle. Okay, this is just underneath the sternohyoid, the one that we saw right now. And this, as the name suggests, it starts from sternum to the thyroid. So let's see where it is. This is the origin. That is the posterior aspect of the manubrium of the sternum. Can you see over here? And where does it get inserted? It gets inserted. over here oblique line of the thyroid cartilage of the larynx okay one thing i would like to show you is look at its relation with the thyroid gland this is the thyroid gland it is just above the gland like the orange peel so many times during uh, in case of goiter or if we want to have a good access we may have to dissect that so the action is similar to the other infrared muscles that is it depresses the larynx depression and fixation of the higher bone when acting together with the other infrared neck muscles what is its nerve supply c1 c3 via an ansa cervicalis okay really good demonstration how they have retracted the sternocleidomastoid muscle and actually this is how you have to do when suppose we are going for a uh, node biopsy okay uh, level 3 level 4 area this is how we'll have to delineate the sternocleidomastoid and go inside and take the biopsy out what we need to know is its relationships so <clears throat> don't get panicked when you're seeing other red fibers and we know that which muscle is what moving on to the next muscle the omohyoid muscle quite funny okay this is one of the most difficult muscles that people find at least i found it slightly challenging and i questioned its existence it's a funny muscle and you do start questioning why why is it there well it is there to help us so this omohyoid muscle which is a paired flat muscle uh relatively it is one of the longest no, it is the longest uh, infrahyoid neck muscle. It depresses the hyoid bone. Okay, this is the hyoid bone. It depresses it. The omohyoid, as you can see from the color coding, they have got two bellies. Okay, the inferior belly, which is inferior, the superior belly, which is superior. And they are connected together with an intermediate tendon. So remember, there was one more in intermediate tendon we had looked into. Which was it? The digastric. Okay. So similarly, now coming back to this part, this is the intermediate tendon. So this muscle connects the hyoid to the scapula. 
Can you see this? That's the scapula. It connects over there. Remember this. You know, humans, we have a very good photogenic memory. So put this in your mind. It starts from here, goes over here. The omohyoid, as mentioned, it has got two bellies, the inferior and superior. The inferior belly arises from the superior border of the scapula and it runs, runs anterior superiorly, like this. Okay? And this ends at the intermediate tendon. Now, this location of intermediate tendon is very important. It is behind the sternocleidomastoid number one. Number two, it is at the level of arch of cricoid cartilage. Talking about superior belly, so it starts or originates from the intermediate tendon that's over here and goes upwards and courses superiorly to insert at the lower border of the body of hyoid. The lower border. Okay. There's one really important thing we should know about this muscle. This muscle has a very close relationship with the internal jugular vein. Okay. Also, one more thing is the omohyoid muscle, it forms few border lines between the minor neck triangles. Its superior belly separates the carotid sheath and the muscular triangles, which are both part of the anterior neck triangles. And the inferior belly of the omohyoid divides the posterior triangle into the subclavian and occipital triangle. Okay? The superior belly divides carotid and muscular triangles and here inferior between the occipital and the subclavian. What is, what is this function? Well, as like other muscles, the omohyoid also functions to depress the hyoid bone and the larynx and opens the laryngeal inlet. There is one unique function of this muscle. That is, it connects to the carotid sheath. So when this muscle contracts, it pulls the sheath and decreases the pressure in the internal jugular vein. This action is convenient as it increases the venous return from the head to the superior vena cava. So that's its reason why it is there. It's mainly for the blood supply managing it. So, we are at the last muscle. We are done with the superficial muscles. We have done with the suprahyoid, infrahyoid, and now the last muscle is the thyrohyoid. Okay? Really tiny muscle. Just hang on one more minute before this video gets over. So, this is a quadrilateral muscle. And it arises from the oblique line of the thyroid lamella. Okay, this is the thyroid cartilage. It courses, courses superiorly and gets inserted on the lower border of the hyoid bone. Okay, so this muscle, very tiny, and we have been reading a lot about this muscle uh, whenever we talk about the voice and the pitch. So this muscle is innervated by C1 and also by hypoglossal. Its function in conjunction with other infrahyoid muscles, it also depresses the hyoid bone. However, the thyroid muscle has an additional function. When the hyoid bone is fixed, when this is fixed and this contracts, what will happen? The thyroid cartilage will get pulled up okay so what will that make a difference so this action is important for person that need to sing high notes so we have covered the anterior neck muscles we will continue with the sinus anatomy which is over here not in this video but the next video also, I have got suggestions regarding the radiology scan. 
सो दैट विल कम सून सी यू ऑन यूट्यूब अगेन थैंक यू फॉर लिस्निंग होप यू लाइक दिस वीडियोज प्लीज लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड सजेस्ट वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विथ आर पैरनेज और साइंस वीडियोज एंड ऑल्सो सम रेडियोलॉजी वीडियोज कमिंग सोन सी यू